all the Boston and load. And um, when I was coming, I was reading the interview that you gave uh, XXL like uh, 11 years ago. Yeah, more than 11 years ago. Yeah, 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 you're right, 11, because the my album came out the year before. Yeah, June. Yeah. Uh, one, so what was your state of mind? Because I remember you was just 21. I was on trial. I was actually on trial. And, you know... And what happened through your mind? Because... Here you are, singing with Bad Boy, <laughs> chilling with Diddy, with J-Lo, yeah. album with Bad Boy, yeah. and then boom. Yeah. When I did that interview, you know, I was on trial, and I was facing 25 years. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Again, people like to, 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 to be revisionists, you know, they want to go back and change what it was. But the bottom line is, you know, a situation happened, a very unfortunate situation, you know, um, where, you know, three people were injured. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, one of those people tried to shoot me. You know what I'm saying? One of those people tried to shoot me. One of those people was my was my homegirl. You know, uh, a woman by the name of Tanya Rubin. I knew her. She was, a, she was a singer. She was from my block. You know what I'm saying? We was cool. Mm. We go to the studio together, all that. And, you know, I'm definitely sorry that she had to suffer. But there was like four guns going off that night. At least four mm. guns going off that night. You understand what I'm talking about? So, with the exception of the guy that I shot, I shot one guy, I pulled out, and I tried to shoot the guy that shot me, that, that was that was shooting at me, that, mm -hmm. that was getting ready to shoot at me, that pulled out. He reached for his gun, I shot him, security guard grabbed my hand, and that's when the gun went off, and a bunch of other guns was going off. Mm -hmm. So we don't know who got hit other than that one guy, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, from, from who's ricochet. That's number one. So I'm dealing with all that. All these tough guys, the same way dudes is on Twitter talking reckless and everybody's tough, that's the same way it was. But now all these tough guys is testifying against me. Everybody testified. Scar, who's from Brooklyn, who used to be a little thug, little gangster, ratchet game and all that. Mm -hmm. He done, he cooperating with the DA. You know what I mean? He cooperating with the DA. The other kid, Julius Jones, who pulled out. He cooperating with the DA. Everybody cooperating. You understand? Mm -hmm. um, and then my co-defendant, you know, he is totally against me. He don't even talk to me uh, while we on trial. You know what I'm saying? He called the witness, the most damaging witness, a chick by the name of um, Sharice Myers. Mm -hmm. And when we seen the witnesses on the list, I stepped to him like, yo, blood, you can't you can't call this 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 woman. Number one, she lied. And number two, is it's the most devastating witness. Why? Because it's one thing when the district attorney say, yo, Sean was wilding out, but it's another thing when my co-defendant, you know understand, who's supposed to be my homeboy, mm -hmm. call a witness that says even worse than what the DA is saying. It, mm -hmm. It's gonna finish me. And she lied. At least if you're gonna call the witness. Let her tell a story that's going to benefit all of us, which is the truth. Mm -hmm. You ain't have a gun. You ain't shoot nobody. Fine. You understand? The other kids was trying to shoot at us. The other kids was threatening us, which everybody testified to. Mm -hmm. And Sean pulled out his gun in self-defense to defend him, to defend everyone. You understand? If you're going to call a witness, that's what you're supposed to say. Yeah. That's like somebody running up in here right now mm -hmm. and something jump off and I do what I need to do. You understand? And mm -hmm. then you, they arrest all of us. And then you call, you understand? One of the other dudes that they didn't arrest. They just arrest us three, but they didn't arrest the other two. Mm -hmm. And then you call a dude, and he don't get up there and be like, yo, man, guys bum rushing in here and Sean let off and trying to help us. He say, nah, you know, uh, you know, Sean just, just start shooting. We don't know what happened. <laughs> And you like, yo, that ain't how that ain't how it happened, number one. Uh -huh. And I was defending all of us. So imagine what I was going through. So that's when I did that interview. Uh -huh. and, and I knew I knew I was gonna get convicted. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know they was gonna hit me with so much time. Mm -hmm. You understand? Um, and so that interview was like the, the last interview I did, and I told him, listen, don't put it out until the trial is over. Because okay. a lot of things I was saying that could affect me, they could use it at trial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, you know, I was letting loose. You know? That was right there in the thick of it. I'm going to court every day, you know, Met hat low, Yankee hat low, 
You understand? And, you know, Giant had I had all the fitted. I had to fit it for every day. You know, Gucci suit. You know, Versace suits on, and you know, just really on my mobster thing. And 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 you know, that's that's you know. So so that was just given in a real honest way. And, and that's what I'm saying with all these kids out here. You know, everybody's a tough guy now, and and everybody raps about this life, but they never lived that. You know, with the exception of C Murder, and and, and True Life, and and Max B, and and. Where, where those guys at? They all in prison, you know. Mm -hmm. Fat Joe is, 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 you know, is a stand-up guy that, that definitely escaped. Saigon. That, that escaped Saigon, that's my comrade. A few dudes, my son, who's out now, yeah. but, but did like seven with me. Um, you understand? So, so, but none of these guys that's out here rapping ever perform under pressure. You know, you dig, with, with, with the, like I said, with the exception of the old time of Scarface, you know, Ghostface Killer, and, and you know, Ray, but none of these guys ever perform under pressure. You know, Hover, Hover was really, you know, about that life as far as being hustling, being on the streets, you know, moving that dog food. But none of these other guys ever perform under pressure, and they just say anything. They just tell good stories, and, and it's, it's all Hollywood, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, but Sean, Regardless of what they want to say now, I performed under pressure. I did it. You know, the biggest mob bosses, when they was faced with 25 years or, or, or life, Joseph Messina, Sammy the Bull, the list goes on. With the exception of John Gotti, they all rolled over. So even though my co-defendant was, was, was calling witnesses to testify against me, even though it was a terrible situation, I did it. Man had low. BK bot. You understand? Worldwide mobster attitude and perseverance. I did it. So you know, uh, you know, that that's where the interview comes from. And that's where my music comes from. My music comes from a very honest place. When you listen to Gangland, everything there is all honesty, Frank Matthews. That's the conscience of a dope dealer. That's how Jay-Z really feels. And when you listen to Jay-Z's music, you know, Hogan music is, is real honest. He don't really be telling stories. He don't really be exaggerating. But all these other guys, you know what I'm saying? They storytellers, you know? They, 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 maybe their brother might have did that. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? They cousin or they friends. But they ain't really about that. And, and, and my message is you don't have to be about that. Mm -hmm. That's my message. If you nice, if you nice with, with, with the pen game, if you're a great musician, then why don't you just rap about your truth? You know what I'm saying? Why don't you rap about changing gang culture? Why don't you rap about changing the circumstances that lead to your comrades having to blow somebody's brains out, having to sell, you know, a thousand keys, having to live mm -hmm. on the run, having to live the rest of their life behind the pen? Why don't you make records about how can we change that? How can we stop that? But don't you think that now the game has changed a little bit? Like uh, Wiz Khalifa, all these new guys, they don't even talk out of the street. They're just talking about having fun, smoking weed. Yeah, I don't really listen to them, so I couldn't tell you, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But, you know, there's still a few of the popular artists that, you know what I'm saying, that, that, that you know, their focus is on this life that they never lived. And mm -hmm. they don't, you could tell because their, their music isn't honest. They have no conscience. Mm -hmm. It's just like, yeah, I'm selling a million keys. And yeah, you know, I'm making, you know, tens of millions of dollars and you know, yeah. And that's that's not the truth. That's not honest, man. There's a lot of paranoia with that life. Mm. There's a lot of, you know, backstabbing and double crossing, a lot of betrayal. You mm. understand a lot of lives lost, a lot of comrades, you know, doing life in, in the penitentiary. You know, it's it's not a pretty life. Mm. So so you can tell by the way they talk about it, it's not honest because it's, they just give them one side, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Can you tell us what's the situation of if there is really a situation with Kendrick Lamar? Listen, this kid, this kid, the game, you know, he's he's a whore, you know, he's a media whore, and I, and I say that, you know, in just matter of fact, you know, he he been he's my protege, um, he's my protege, he idolized me. I'm about to put out some audio today, matter of fact where it, you know, one of his artists is telling the whole story on how when he got when the artist got signed, Game told him, yo, go listen to all the Shine albums, study Shine. He studied me. You know, it's like B.I.G. influenced me. You know, ain't, ain't a rapper from the, the 90s that wasn't influenced by 
Notorious B.I.G. Ain't a rapper from Brooklyn that wasn't inspired by B.I.G. B.I.G. is, you know, God of rap, you know, one of the greatest ever, you know what I'm saying? So I would never, you know, say anything about B.I.G. You know, even Hove. Hove inspired me. Jigga, Jay-Z inspired mm -hmm. me. You know what I mean? That's one of my influences. I study him. I would never, even if him and I didn't get along, and, you know, I would talk about what we didn't get along about, or I would say whatever, but I would never, you know what I mean, go to the limits that these dudes is going to. He's doing, um, you know, 10 years in jail, mm -hmm. you know, dropping soap every day and, you know, <laughs> being, you being a low-key yeah. butt pirate for 10 years. <laughs> oh, this what you, gonna do? you know, it gets a little, it could change your life. It's where they just, so that's, that, 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 that says you're a whore. You're just going to say anything. You know what I'm saying? You're just going to say anything. You know, mm -hmm. you're just going to do anything when, when the, the reality for the last 12 years ain't been that. For the last 12 years, you've been screaming free shine. For the last 12 years, every album you come out with, you rap about me, you gonna do your time with shine. You gonna smuggle shine out of Belize. You just put out the mixtape California Republic. Mm -hmm. He's on that talking about he gonna go to Belize and pop tags and this, that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I talk to shine a lot. It's like, you know, my brother in hip hop, so to speak, but, um... I'm just glad he got a jail. And if you go listen to his first album, his his unreleased material, you know, you close your eyes, you think that was shine. Yeah. And you know, it's not a problem. I'm flattered. I'm happy. I took him under the wing. I said it's okay. You could be me. It's all right. You know what I'm saying? You paying homage. You know. You know. You come from a, a real environment. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? It's cool, man. But he he just don't make no sense. And this is a perfect example of that. You know, Kendrick Lamar is dope, and I said he was dope. Said he got mad potential. Said that he could make a classic album. I just didn't feel that his album was classic. And, and you know, he's not proven. He's not proven. Again, this is the culture we live in. He ain't, what he did, it's one thing if I'd have said something about Dr. Dre, or mm -hmm. I'd have said something about Ice Cube, or I'd have said something about somebody that's proven, mm -hmm. and people get all, you know, um, emotional. Mm -hmm. But to say something about an artist that ain't never did nothing, what he did, he ain't never did nothing. We might not even be talking about him next year. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm talking about? So, you know, it ain't nothing with him, and he handled it the right way as far as I was concerned. He said, yo, listen, you know, that's his opinion, whatever. And he moved on. Even when he did a little record, he said, yo, you know, he, he joked about it. It's nothing. Like, this guy, he just being a whore. You know, he, he got an album coming out, and he's just promoting. Because, you know, again, you got to look at people's actions. First, 50 Cent was, was a rat, and it's, you know, 50, G, you not, and he go on a campaign riding on 50. Mm -hmm. Now, he want to apologize to 50, he crying, he tearing up, talking about, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, I want to go back to G unit. No, so, so this is who you're dealing with. Um, for 50, man, like, I'm just going, um, I'm going to apologize to him. You know, just as a man, they don't have nothing to do with music or beef or nothing like that. Like, how do you have beef with a punk? You understand? If this dude is so much of a punk, that, nigga. stay off of me, nigga. All right, all right, stand on me, nigga. All right, the hospital, man, right? What? what? You want fishy? You want fishy right here? What? Yeah. 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 Let's go. They call on the pillow. We'll put a nigga on the internet. Huh? Huh? We'll put a nigga on the square. Square enough? Huh? 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 Look at me. Look at me. 40. 40 Glock. Look at 40 Glock, y'all. Fuck ass nigga. If you, number one, if you look at the camera, the dude walked away. So, I don't know where they do that at. At least when we had fights, when we was young, we tried to kill somebody. Dudes is gonna be brain dead, or they they wouldn't have no jibs. Their teeth would be gone. Something gonna happen. Jaw broke. Nothing. The dude walk away and gave an interview the next day. Come on, man. Are you serious? That's not Killer Cali. Don't let this kid fool you. He don't represent Killer Cali. He ain't about that life. You understand? Because if he was about that, he'd have put a hot one in the kid, or the kid would have been in the hospital in a coma, something. Mm -hmm. So these dudes is playing, man. They playing. You sold a few million records. You're famous. Why are you running around trying to be a tough guy? And you're not even doing a good job at it. <laughs> because tough guys don't let people walk away from fights. Real tough guys don't even have fights. 
You understand? They 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 putting you in a casket. Because when you have a problem, real tough guys don't have problem with punks. So having problems and letting your rivals live is not good for business. Because real rivals, if he really had beef, they'd be following him at every show, right? And he wouldn't be able to eat. They would just make life difficult for him. You understand? So so you know, it's it's really you know it's publicity, it's that media horror stuff, and and you know it's not kosher. You know what I'm saying? And it's not it's not it's not honest, because you can't support somebody for 12 years. Mm. You can't say shine 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 for 12 years, and then I I give an opinion that you can disagree with, and then now I'm this and that and woo woo. Come on, it's not honest. Nobody nobody gonna believe that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. What's up, what's up?